Hi Travel Bugs, I'm Diane. And I'm Guillermo. Thank you for joining us in this Move to Portugal vlog series. In the last video, we showed you our step-by-step -step Portuguese D7 visa application process leading up to the set visa approval waiting period. Due to the delay of our apostle birth certificates to obtain our Mexican criminal records, we had to push our move date to mid-August. Luckily, our landlord in Guadalajara was kind enough to extend our lease for an extra month. And while we waited for visa approvals, we began to organize the logistics of this trip. The inventory, sale, purge, and donations of all our belongings here in Mexico. We also took a quick trip to the USA to get vaccinated and say goodbye to family and friends. And of course, we got another wrench thrown at us. This time from the CEF office in Portugal. So get your popcorn ready and let's get started. During the three to six week wait for our visa applications to be approved, we were confident in our time frame to leave for Portugal. According to the Portuguese consulate in Mexico, our application packets were perfect and there was much optimism to hear back from Seth in Portugal sooner than the average of six weeks. We weren't getting our hopes up because according to the American and France PT Facebook group, even the VFS Global at the Washington DC consulate, which is one of the fastest turnarounds for approvals, was having delays due to COVID and an influx of applications. So even if that was the case, August 10th seemed to be the reasonable move day. And to make it even more special, it was the eve of Diane's birthday. And who doesn't want to land in your new home in Europe on your actual birthday? During this waiting period, we took advantage of the great medical care in Guadalajara. We went ahead and got all our general medical checkups. We made appointments with the dentist, optometrist, dermatologist, gynecologist, and general doctors. We collected all of our updated medical records to make the transition to the Portuguese healthcare system easy and in good overall health. Since I like complete organization on planet, I went ahead and created an inventory sheet to include all of our belongings. Although there isn't much that we have in Mexico, remember we sold about 90% of everything we own three years ago before we left the United States. We now understand our essentials for the day-to-day -day living, and we also learn to appreciate experiences rather than things. We love to keep these memories on our YouTube channel, and in case you haven't liked and subscribed yet, this is a good time to smash those buttons. When we lived in the U.S., besides donating a lot of stuff, we organized a wine tasting party and price tagged all of our things and invited every one of our friends. You guessed it, the more wine they drank, the more they bought. Some of them didn't even remember the things they bought. But in the end, most of our stuff was gone and we had total fun getting rid of it all. It did cross my mind to do the same in Guadalajara, but with tequila. I think that could have gotten out of hand very quickly though. We also created individual to-do lists, a timeline file, and a diary using Google Keep. We like how well organized this app is, and we can share all access between Guillermo and I. We had family meetings every Friday. Well, that's been in place since we retired three years ago. It keeps us organized and allows us to spend our time wisely, mixing activities, travel, investments, exercising, food menus, and chores. It works really well for us. In mid-May, we also had our son Devon pay us a visit to celebrate my birthday in the beautiful town of Tequila in Jalisco, but mainly to also get his LASIK eye surgery. The reviews in many Guadalajara clinics were phenomenal, with plenty of success stories, and the clinic we chose exceeded our expectations. 
with utmost professionalism and a state-of-the-art facilities. Besides, the price we paid was 750 USD for both eyes, and that included the initial consultation. You should see how happy and more confident our son is after living most of his life wearing thick glasses like me. We also began studying some Portuguese. We enjoyed Talk the Streets, a YouTube channel hosted by Liz, a cool instructor and super sweet. Her pronunciation and teaching skills are great and easy to understand. We highly recommend her if you want to learn the basics. Não faz mal. Não faz mal. This means like, don't worry about it or no worries. And this is so easy to use all the time. You can use it when someone is apologizing or when somebody bumps into you. In mid-June, we planned a quick trip home to Virginia and the United States. We wanted to say goodbye to friends and take care of a few things while we were there. One of them was getting our Johnson & Johnson vaccines. I'm not a big fan of needles, but the one and done shot was the best option for us since we plan on traveling extensively and Europe seems to have big restrictions to non-vaccinated travelers. I had a lot of trepidation about getting the COVID-19 vaccination and in all honesty, may not have if we didn't travel as much. I'm a true believer in natural medicine and healthy foods for the body. I'm concerned, as many others are, that this has not been tested long-term. And we do not ultimately know if obtaining the vaccine may cause health concerns in the future. It may actually make us more prone to infection in the long-term. And this is the only mRNA vaccine approved by the FDA. I certainly do not want to be the cause of anyone else being infected and realize, living in society, that we need to do what is best for everyone. But I truly worry that ultimately, this leads to more government control over our lives. We had such a great time seeing all our friends. Our son helped us organize a pub crawl in our old neighborhood, and so many friends showed up to say hi and bye at the same time. I got to play a little poker with my old buddies and also visited Lake Anna for some sun and fun. It's always a wonderful time to see those beautiful faces. We miss you all so much and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for always being there. You all better be planning to visit us in Portugal soon. No excuses. During the final days of our visit to the United States, we finally heard back from the Portuguese consulate in Mexico. From the moment I saw the email notification, for some reason I had this dreaded bad feeling. And lo and behold, there it was, another delay in our visa approvals. And you wouldn't believe why. The SAF in Portugal was requesting from us apostle FBI reports from the United States. Even though the requirements on their SAF website clearly states criminal record certificate from the country of origin or the country where the applicant is residing for over a year. We've been living in Mexico for three years and now we have to find a way to quickly provide these records within a short window of time. We questioned the Portuguese consulate about the reasons we were getting a different requirement this late in the game, especially when we were pretty much ready to move, but they could not provide an answer. They only said it is what they want and if you don't provide it, they won't proceed. Frustration, anger, concerns are only a few of the feelings we were going through. But luckily, the one positive aspect of this ordeal was that we were already in the USA when we received the news, so we may have a chance to obtain what is needed. The fight against time began. We found out we can get biometric fingerprinting services through Sterling Identity, a background and identity service company located at a local UPS store. This company's digital FBI report is also accepted by the U.S. Department of State, so it can be a postal. We headed to a fingerprint scanner nearby, and the whole process took about 20 minutes for the both of us. We paid $50 each, and within 5 minutes of fingerprint submission, we received our FBI reports via email. They, of course, look good and clean. The Apostle process was a different story. We uploaded the FBI reports and sent them off to sespanish.com. 
The apostle fee was 129 US dollars for each. Luckily for us, it was only taking approximately three weeks at the time, and we requested that they be overnighted directly to the Portuguese consulate in Mexico City for an additional fee of 50 US dollars. We know we were playing with fire by trusting a company to provide service in a timely manner during COVID and having exactly six weeks until our departure time. All we could do is wait and hope for the best. Worst case, we would stay in Mexico and get an Airbnb until the visa approval comes through. With this latest Chef Portugal stunt, we didn't want to take any more chances with any other documentation that we could possibly need in Portugal. So we went ahead and requested both of our DMV driving records and marriage license and mailed them to the Virginia State Department so they can be a postal. One of our local friends received them and mailed them to us in Mexico. We hope there aren't any more hurdles to get over. We are still motivated and confident on our timeline. And we expect to set foot in Portugal on August 11th and celebrate my birthday in Lisbon. We still have lots to show you, from airline requirements, moving out, saying goodbye to our Mexican friends, Airbnb stays, the final visa approval, and the dog transport process. Stay tuned for vlog number four in a couple of weeks. And thank you for watching our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Thank you.